All right. More time. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I'll just do one last thing here. In the preparations. Uh, and where did that go? Mm -hmm. And that one. Right, yeah, right. Um, <coughs> hello and welcome to uh, this talk about time management and time tracking. Um, yeah. Oh, hang on. I had a preparation list. I had to check that all things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Firstly, just quickly, very briefly about me, just who you are staring at today. Um, I am from Denmark in Copenhagen and I work as a Freelancer, primarily web design, but uh, yeah, that's about it. And I recently became an uncle to this little thing. I'm very proud of it. Yeah, so that's very briefly about me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so why should you listen to me today? I would say there are two areas where I would argue that I should be listened to. Firstly, on time recording and time management. It's, as you can see, it's something I thought a lot about. It's something I do a lot, and I've read and I heard a lot about it, podcasts and books and such. Plus, I think it's awesome and fun uh, to explore that world. So that's why I think I have an input that's worth listening to. And in general, when I do something, I do it 100%, so I'm all in, all out. So that's why with this time recording, I just, I do it a lot, and I really enjoy it. Plus. Uh, I got the idea from CDP Gray. He's a YouTuber. Some of you may know him. And um, yeah, he's really smart. Um, but yeah. So, introduction just quickly what is this talk going to be about? There are going to be two parts. Initially, about um, time tracking and time management in one's personal life. And then the last part is time tracking or time management in uh, according to work. Um, and then a disclaimer, this is not for everyone. I'm not saying this is the truth, the, the truth and if everyone did this, the world would be a better place. Uh, it's quite extensive and quite extreme, but if you disagree with the core of it, then I hope that I can somehow say something that can influence you in another way. Okay, so I'm not gonna say, if you're the right one throughout the, uh, throughout the talk, I'm just gonna say, this is what you should do, and if you disagree, then yeah, then we can take a beer tonight. If you have any recommendations or feedback or comments, uh, I really enjoy these feedback loops that I'll get back to where you evaluate yourself. Right now, you would be an excellent feedback loop. So if you would do me uh, uh, an honor or a, a favor, then afterwards, then if you would write me just a comment of what you liked and what you, did li uh, what you disliked the most, then I would really appreciate it. And all such comments or questions or whatever, you can send to this email who's in the which is in the bottom left throughout the entire talk. And if you have any questions, Q and A's are sometimes brutal, brutal for the listeners. Because someone says something a long questions that's across a tangent that no one disagrees with, which is why I created this thing called let's slide do. Uh, it's really nice where if you go into sli slide.do on your phone, go into this one here, then you can add a question and you can see each other's questions and vote them up or down throughout the talk. And so if, <laughs> so if there is a question that you have that you think, oh, that would be good to say, I, I have to remember it, then you can perhaps write in there either anonymously or with a name so other people can see it. And then in the end, we'll go through them first. And then afterwards, we can do the, the free shooting from the hip. Uh, yeah, so as an introduction, this is just a thought experiment. Uh, I named it the Nugget Test. I'm the inventor, uh, but I stole the idea from a guy called Tim Urban. Uh, he, wrote, he writes the blog called Wait But Why. I'll get back to him in a second. But yeah, so this Nugget Test, it's this thing where you guys just imagine something. And 
for now, think about yesterday. And it's not important if that was a special day or what you did. Just quickly just close your eyes and just, just think back, what did you do yesterday? There was a morning, what did you do? Get up, probably travel here. Just, just, just go through the whole thing. It's not important if you can remember the, sp the specifics or not. And yeah, that was that. Now, if you can, try to break it down into about four or five parts. It's not important that it's four or five. It can be three or seven. It's just break it down so they're bigger chunks. For me, it would be like a morning routine. Then it would be go to work. And then it would be leave work. Something like that. So they're big, big chunks. Have you done it? I assume or hope so. Now, out of these parts, now pick the part that you like the most. For whatever reason is important to you, that's the most interesting, that just sticks out some, some way, some, the part that you like the most. I've, I hope you've done it. Uh, now take that part, and if you can, then slice it up into small 10-minute chunks. So it's usually one's evening routine. That's usually where the most meaning happens in, in our lives. But if you do the, some 10-minute chunks, and when you've done it, then pick the nugget. So pick the 10 minute nugget that you like the best from yesterday. And it's not important if it's one nugget, it can be two, if you have two parts, but just think about it that this, that out of that, that entire day, you have about 17 awake hours of the day that you, you pick this nugget. And now try to look at that nugget and try to analyze it. Why did you like it? Did it have meaning? Did it give you a feeling? Did it, what did it do to you? Why did you choose that nugget? Um, yeah, so all of this are inspired by the article from Tim Urban's blog called Wait But Why. The article's, the article's name is uh, 100 blocks a day, and you can easily find it if you just Google it once. Uh, the, blog, the, um, the article is about that you, you have about a thousand awake hours a day. And if you take those thousand minutes and divide it up to 10 minute nuggets or 10 minute blocks, that you then, how, how do you spend, how do you use these blocks? Uh, yeah, and I just wanna read this aloud because I really, it grabs the essence of what I wanna try to re uh, get at today. It goes like this because it's a little hard to read. I'm just gonna grab some water first. It goes like this. You'd have to think about everything you might spend your time doing in the context of its worth in blocks. Cooking dinner requires three blocks, while ordering in requires zero. Is cooking dinner really worth three blocks to you? And is 10 minutes of meditation a day, sorry. Yeah, is 10 minutes of meditation a day enough to dedicate a block to it? Reading 20 minutes a night allows you to read an additional 15 books a year. Is that worth two blocks? If your favorite recreation is playing video games, you'd have to consider the value you place on fun before deciding on how many blocks it warrants. Getting a drink with a friend after work takes up about 10 blocks. How often do you want to use 10 blocks for that purpose and on which friends? Which blocks should be treated as non-negotiable in their labeled purpose and which should be more flexible? Which blocks should be left blank with no assigned purpose at all? I really like that, especially the part about getting a drink. It sounds so, yeah, we'll do that. That's 10 blocks. That, that's one tenth of your day that you spend on, yeah, just grabbing a drink. Yeah, so the first part, personal time tracking. Uh, so why should you use it? It's a really good feedback loop where you can reflect on your life and you can see, am I doing what I like doing? Yeah, it adds the reflection as said before, and then you're then able to track what's important. For instance, spending time with one's kids. You hear that a lot. Oh, I wish I spent more time with my kids. Now you have a way where you can see, am I actually spending as much time as I, as I like? Where, where are you tracking it? Uh, so how do you do it? There's two main pieces of that puzzle. The first one is fairly simple, but actually a quite important piece. That's categorizing the days. For instance, I don't want to mix up my regular daily routine with traveling to Seoul Tower to, to do a talk because that mixes up the data. I want to keep the data stable 
so I can actually see what data I'm looking at. Um, so it means, for instance, if you, if you think about one day, then you can e easily determine, is this a regular day? Is it the whole thing regular? Is it kind of regular, where, you, where half of it maybe is regular, and then the other half is something random, where someone gets hit by a car and you have to go out, uh, or, and the non-regular days, that can go into Bali, something really good or something really terrible, but it's a non-regular day. That's categorizing the day. The other part is um, yeah, tasks and areas. The app I use for this is, um, is used for tracking time to invoice clients. So and that's why I call it just tasks and clients, but in reality it's the areas of one's life that I would advise you to, to use it for in this first part with personal time tracking. Uh, but so areas and clients are going to be synonyms for the rest of this talk. Um, yeah, so the technical setup on your phone, uh, you can download an app and then track your time. I would, uh, I would advise, I would recommend these. I use the one called Time Recording Timesheet app by DynamicG. I find that, and you'll see screenshots from this one. That's if you're an, on Android. On iOS, that's the one CDP Grey uses. I haven't tried it myself but it's called Toggle, and that should be really well as well. But I haven't even seen it. Yeah? Yeah? Great. Time. Yeah, time. <laughs> All right. So this was the thing I explained briefly before. What's a regular day and what's a non-regular day? That These are the three categories I have for my days, just to make it simple, because the more advanced and complex it is, the more difficult it is in the moment. It should be non, oh, sorry, it should be trivial whenever you do something, what it is. Is it a regular day or what is it? Um, yeah, and then I would advise that you take two approaches. Either try to maximize one thing or try to kill other things. So you can add, so there's two ways to do it, but we all have 24 hours in a day. So somehow the time will be moved from one thing to another, obviously. Yeah, and then also think about what's the ideal distribution so we don't just try to eliminate the non-regular days or we try to maximize them. For instance, some people really like the comfort of their home and just the regular day and not going out like hobbits. They would probably maximize the regular days. And the adventurers that want to go out on skateboards and jump over cliffs and stuff like that, they would probably maximize the non-regular days if they use my frames, uh, framework for this. Yeah, but just briefly, think about the distribution. Don't just try to pound it down until forever. Think about what's a good balance for you to also st stay sane. Tasks and clients. This is, this is how I would advise, so that's an example of how to divide the tasks and clients areas. So briefly, waking up. Just to explain how, how you determine it. Waking up is from the alarm rings till you, till you stop, till you get out of bed. For instance, snoozing. People say, oh, I can snooze for an hour. That's one sixteenth of your day that you spent in your bed, not sleeping, uh, getting more sleep, and not spending your day on anything. That's a lot of time. And that's why if you know that the second your alarm rings, you start a timer, then it's just, it's just that conscious action that you know, I'm wasting life right now being not awake, being not asleep. So that's one way, it's like a forced feedback loop that you know I'm active, a actively spending time on waking up. Um, morning routine, no one can jump out of bed and walk out the door. They have to do something, get dressed, all of these things. And that takes up an incredible amount of time. I'm just saying, I had the data and I, can, and I will show you. Um, yeah, and all of these, they fit in a category. So, oh, yeah, in a client, with a client whatever, in an area. Um, you have the necessary and naturally constrained tasks. For instance, transport. Whenever I go to work, I don't just take an extra trip around the park. You know, I go from A to B and that's it. It's naturally constrained in what it is. Um, and even if I do the extra thing around the park, I would plug in on something else. It's something that it kills itself naturally. Then you have the necessary unconstrained tasks, like eating. I can eat in three minutes if I'm really rushed. I need 10 minutes. I can also spend 45 minutes when my primary task is eating. 
but I'm just, you know, flipping and my phone. Like, I'm actually eating, but I'm just spending so much time on it. So that's, you should be real, really wary of these, the necessary unconstrained tasks, because you have to do it, but they can be time voids. They can just suck time out of us. And yeah, so now imagine all of these clients spread across the top, and then the tasks underneath them, and that's the next shot here. Next shot here. So you have the clients at the top, and then the different tasks underneath. That's the distribution. So for instance, waking up was in the necessary unconstrained tasks, while also a break. It can be three minutes, five minutes, an hour, if you really just walk around thinking about nothing. Yeah, so this is how it's all structured together. Um, yeah. Now, self-terminating tasks, they're the ones, for instance, no one goes to the gym, forgets the time, and then all of a sudden, oh, I've been here for seven hours. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you, it's naturally self-terminating. They will, they will stop themselves. Also, go into the bathroom. Maybe you sit with your phone, but the actual act of going to the bathroom, it doesn't, like, oh, whoa, I've been here for an hour. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's naturally self-terminating. Yeah. Um, yeah, naturally terminates itself. There are also the other side of things, the non-self-terminating tasks. And they're the one we need to worry, we need to really think about. Because these things, they're the ones we naturally gravitate towards whenever we're tired, decision fatigued, had a long day, haven't eaten well, haven't exercised. Whenever we just, ah, uh, then, ah, uh, Facebook. Uh, 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 uh. They're the ones, they're, they're, they are the time voids. Like this, <laughs> something that you can just keep on doing forever, and it will, it brings momentum with it. Um, and they're different for people. Some people don't have Netflix and or, or don't go on Facebook or do whatever. So, just think about what are your time voids? What do you go to when you don't want to do anything? For some, it's the paper, but I'm pretty sure that for no one, it's quantum mechanics. Like, oh, I'm really tired, I want to learn about quantum mechanics. It's always something redundant or something that doesn't really improve our lives. And even if it's quantum mechanics, then, so, then it's sitting like this, watching YouTube, like, uh, not, 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 not learning it, but just feeling like we're learning it. Yeah. So I'm not saying they should be removed. I'm just saying, initiate these tasks with caution, because they are hard to get out of. No one sits down and watches Netflix for five minutes and then shuts it off. It brings momentum. So really, whenever you do it, do it. But don't, don't shut it on and off. And that's why something like Facebook on the phone, I would really think twice about having it. Because this is really necessary. Uh, and just to paint a picture, imagine that I wanted to lose weight and that I had a bunch of chocolate lying around all the time. I could just, just grab it and just take a bite of that chocolate. Imagine that picture, and then the opposite with this not chocolate, and you have to bike for a mile to get it. I know which person I would bet on losing weight the, the quickest. And that's why if it's a split second away, then it's, it's a quicker uh, brain fart away in order to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so these time voids, what time voids do you have? And first of all, are they worth it? Is it really worth it doing it? And it's different how people try to eliminate it, but yeah. But identify them just at first, and then let, let, let that be that. Um, and if it's worth it, then remember that. Some people just say, hey, I am who I am, and if I like going on YouTube, Facebook, Netflix, you name it, then that's what I want to do, then great. And then don't feel guilt about it. But just think about it, just reflect for a second. It, is it cool? Then enjoy it. If no, then figure out systems or something else to release yourself from, from these time voids. Because don't rely on willpower. Just don't. I, I have yet to meet the man who said, oh, I wanted to lose weight, and then I just woke up one day and did it. Like losing weight, everyone, everyone tries to lose that five pounds. And for point zero 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 one, it succeeds. And what do they do? And even if they said, I did it because I was strong and I had my willpower. I said, really? Was that the, the thing that missed before all that other years of your life? Like the rain dance, they did something and uh, yeah, that was willpower. Like, no, it's probably, it could be something else as well. 
Um, yeah, so I would say in order to succeed, then make it impossible for yourself to fail. And just think about what that could be. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's go through a quick example. This is the app that I use, and this is what it looks like on the screen, and this here is just a zoomed in so you could read a little bit. Here you can see the regular that I marked that day as regular. And at first, when you look at this, you say, wow, that's a lot of work. Every time you do something else, you have to clock in and clock out. And yeah, it is a lot of work, but you stop thinking about it because I like the whole confrontation with the question, what am I doing now? We've all tried to have that Saturday or Sunday that you woke up at eight and then you blink and then it's seven o'clock in the middle of the night. Where, wow, where did that day go? Now I can document where my day went and I could, I could look at it. But I'm not doing it because of this. I'm doing it because of this. Because I can take an entire month and then I can make a task matrix where it adds up the different tasks that I've done. So I can see a sum of it all. I've just blurred out some of it because of work and client names and it's just a formality. But I can see based on task names that the, the task name in February that I've done the most is the one called social time and I've spent 68 hours and 90, 39 minute minutes, which is 15% of that month. Which means if the month, if the month was uh, 30 days long, then that would be 4.5 days from morning till evening I sat in a social setting. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot, but I still kind of like it. So maybe I don't want to change that too much. But then I can look at, at line four, transport. I spent 5% of that month being in a train, sitting on a bike. I'm just saying that's a lot. I'm, yeah. Um, and I like that I can take one month and then I can compare it to the following month. I say, all right, so my social time spiked a little bit here as well. Transport is 8%. Uh, and you can look at these numbers and you can actually ask yourself, is this the life that I want to be living? Is, is this good? And if yes, then great. Then you can relax and stop that question because I think that we all at some point ask ourselves that question. Like, is this really the life that we want to live? We can do the same for clients or areas of our lives. Uh, I'll just jump straight down to the big numbers like line 15 here. I've called it work men mental because when I started this thing, I also had some functional work where you have to lift or walk or put down. And just briefly, I would really advise people to do as much mental work as possible. Also, uh, event managers, when you have to set this up, move tables around. Then I would have two, one that was called work mental or work functionally because it's so easy to get someone to replace you if you're really good to move things around. But it's a lot harder if you know how to set up a WordPress site. Well, maybe not in this room, but you know, in general. And then I can take the March report and compare it to the April report, report and I can see if I like those numbers. I can look at the necessary tasks that are naturally constrained. I spent 12% of my life doing that, which means transport, bathroom. It's crazy. That's a lot of time that you spend on these. And it both scares me, but I really like knowing it. Yeah, so just to sum up this whole personal part, yeah, um, I would advise because it's easy to make a bazillion tasks and uh, make it really hard to distinguish one from another. And I would still say, because sometimes you do two things at once, but there's a simple question going, what's my primary task? If I'm sitting with friends and eating, if I wasn't eating, would I still be sitting here? And if there wasn't friends here, would I be eating? So just, what, 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 what are you actually doing here? And that's the thing to clock in on. It makes it really simple to answer that question. Sometimes it's a gray zone, but then you figure that out, to split it up somehow. Yeah, and then if there's a big chunk, then try to split it out. And yeah, then try to find a balance and delete the smaller ones and make them part of it. So you, you want some balanced sized chunks of tasks. Yeah, and identify the good and bad ones. Yeah, uh, some clever things. Don't, don't try to turn all the nozzle at once because then you don't know which are the ones that worked. So 
set a deadline, say for the next three weeks, put it in your calendar, say, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try not watching TV and see what happens. All that time will be put in one of the other boxes. And yeah, be quick, but don't hurry. It's never fun to rush something. So, so just whenever, it shouldn't be a stress factor. It should just be yourself observing yourself. So yeah. And what you spend your day on, you spend your life on. So yeah. Yeah, I couldn't find who said that. So it's just someone clever. All right, so time tracking at work. So when we're at work, the approach is fairly simple. It's oh, not simple, fairly uh, alike, um, which means it's the same thing where it's, if you have one chunk, that chunk that's called work, then it's hard to think about, is this what I really want? Am I enjoying it? Uh, why am I tired on Mondays and feel good about it Wednesdays? Well, so, so, so you can analyze the situation based on the numbers in, in the now. Yeah, and whenever you do it, you wanna improve something. If you uh, just, if everything in your life is just absolutely nice, then you shouldn't do it. This is to somehow improve or change something. That could be one of these things here. Yeah, just some initial facts. Working seven, 37 hours and being at work for 37 hours are two vastly different things. So when people say, oh, I'm, I work 80 hours a week, I've done this with work as my primary thing for about half a year, maybe even a bit longer. I have never even reached 60 hours a week. So working, oh, I work 80 hours a week, just fling it out as if it's an apple, like, no, nope, you can maybe be at work for 80 hours, but I refuse to believe that someone could beat me by 20 hours on a regular basis. Because I really try to push the work side of things, and I when when, just reaching 37 is hard. So just saying, yeah, so think about it. And no one's goal is to be at work for 80 hours. Someone's goal is to work for 80 hours, but it, it's never to be geographically in the room for, 30, for, uh, for 80 hours or whatever. Yeah, and think about the difference between urgent and important. Something can easily be one thing and not the other. Uh, so aim for important. Urgent, make a little website for someone and it goes down and she wants to do you to fix it right now, Saturday evening. That's urgent and that's maybe not important. While fixing your life, that's not urgent because we're still living here. But I would argue it's very important. So deathbed you, 80, 60, whatever years from now, look back upon your life and say, wow, yeah, this was a fun ride. Let's go again. And then also consider... It's not that you have to do this forever. What led you here won't ne necessarily won't lead you where you want to go. So, yeah, even if you do it for a week, a day, a month, a year, I don't know. So I'm just saying, think about trying to change things up. Yeah. Um, and Peter Drucker, he's the author behind the book called The, Effect the Effective Executive. He said this quote going, there's nothing so useless as doing efficiently that wi which should not have been done at all. So think about, can this action or this thing we're doing, reading a book, spending time with this person that we don't even like, can it be emitted? And should I emit it? Uh, because that's a really free way of freeing up time, where we feel this social pressure of spending time with someone that we don't even like. Yeah, so the setup at work, same thing again, split it into work tasks, and then don't have it as work, but have it into smaller chunks. And there's a bazillion different ways to do this. So be creative about how you work and what you want to focus, focus on. But I will say it's smart to somehow build into it that you keep, keep an eye on what does your company actually want you to do. Because if you want to be free and find your inner self and all this then, but your company wants you to make money, then it's good that you somehow are able to track that. So when your boss or your clients or your customers or whatever you do come to you and say, well, how, how do you think you're going? Then instead of you going, I'm good. Then you can actually check your numbers and see, am I doing like I want to be doing? And I'll get back to that later on how you can actually do that. Um, I would say it's really good to treat everything as if it was a project. 
even if you're sitting at the register down at the local supermarket, that somehow you put it up into this bite-sized thing called a project. If that's one day you sit in the register scanning things, if that's a week, if that's something else, if you can't break it up into smaller parts, again, so it's not one big chunk you call work and you've no idea how to evaluate th this thing, but that work is this variety of things and you can see this thing I do here is cool, these meetings are crap, this is crap, this is cool, this is crap, that you can somehow divide it into what do you want to do. So whenever you have a meeting or you decide to make some changes, you can actually look at the things that you like and say, how can I get more of these? And the things you don't like and say, how can I get rid of these? Outsourcing it, just saying, no, mom, I'm not going to help you paint again. Um, this guy called Merlin Mann, he, uh, uh, he's been mentioned as a productivity guru, even though he doesn't like it himself. He said on one of, his, uh, one of his podcasts. He's also the inventor of Inbox Zero, if some of you know this, where you control your email in a certain way. Uh, he said this thing that any project without a budget, that which is either time, money, whatever, love, a responsible person and a deadline will never be done. Uh, and I think it's a good thing because it's quite simple that if you give it a budget, how much time you're going to spend on it, a responsible person, probably yourself, and a deadline, um, then you're that much closer to getting this project done. And that can also just be uh, yeah, approaching your goal of becoming a Stinger. I don't know. Uh, just somehow do this and then do it in chunks of time. And if it's a big goal like that, then don't say complete college. That's just torturing yourself. You have to somehow complete course, complete week, do assignment, do something where you can see the horizon, work towards it, boom, evaluate, evaluate. Same thing, set another goal. Yeah, you can aim for that goal, which is the stars, but you know what they say. If you aim for the stars, and miss, then at least you'll float inevitably into the void, right? Yeah, so this is just an example of my task definitions. It's a little hard to read, uh, but it's just to say, as a freelancer, then I put up these, ca these tasks for myself. All of those that are prefixed with a Y, that's because it's, um, it's alphabetically sorted in the task list, that's something that's, that's according to me, which means no one will pay me for that. No one in the world. Everything I do here, that's just free time, time down the drain. So every time I clock in on one of these, I should ask myself, is this really worth the time investment? Will I make money or time or love or feel better? Will I get back um, from this time investment, what I've lost doing it? Because maybe you shouldn't even have a website for yourself. Who knows? I'm just saying, think about it before you do it, because no one pays you for this. And unless it's really fun, then that's its investment. Um, and this is the other side of the list over here, because that's for myself. And then every client I have, then I've prefixed them with a Z, so I can scroll to the very bottom of the list, because those are the ones I plug in on the most. Um, on each of the regular clients I have, I have two categories, as you can see. Exec, well, which stands for where I'm executing something, doing something, and com, which stands for communication. We all know that client that want to talk for 20 hours about that one hour, hour work. That's still 21 hours you have to do something. And if you'd rather want to play computer games or who knows, then that should be, a, yeah. So it's just to illustrate for yourself where, you, where you're investing your time. Um, yeah. That should be about that. I thought it should brief. Yeah. And yeah, also, if you're employed, that top line there, if you're employed, then ask yourself when you sit down at your desk and s do something, if you want to track that time, then ask yourself, who wants to pay me for this? If the answer is no one and you still do it, for instance, checking Facebook or reading the news, Imagine that your boss was standing right here and saw what you did. Would he approve? And if not, then, then just know that you are screwing someone over by doing what you're doing. Uh, I think a lot of people do it, but I just don't think that people know how much they're doing it. Because at the moment, as I said, it's really hard to reach 37 effective hours at work. So 
what do people do when they can't reach those hours? I think they just disturb some of their colleagues. So sit on Facebook. I'm just just saying. I like that reflection. Every time I do something at work, I put up, uh, put up my phone. And I say, "What? Who wants to pay me for this?" That makes it really simple on which task I should, I should clock in on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, back when I was employed, I did this where I did the whole thing and I had my project. It's really difficult to read. It's just to illustrate that I did the time tracking and then I exported a file to my Dropbox and I had a Python script that treated that. I went through and all the tasks that was prefixed with duck -a -duck -a -duck should be sorted like this. And then after a day's work, I could then bring up this and I could see the top part, the special and unpaid, that's the time that I either spend on hobby projects or breaks or time that I spent at work that I wasn't paid for. The second part, Help Scout. Some of you may know it. Uh, I, d I did some support in there. That was just to see how much time am I doing. And I had one task and then I added a comment on it. And my project then did that, that if it had a comment then it made a task by itself, so I didn't have to sit and make tasks all the time. I can just add one line, uh, the number of the task, and then I can see how many minutes I spent on, on the different help scout cases. And if it, if it had dash F afterwards, then it was free. And if it had dash, uh, what was it, P, then it was uh, paid. Because the more time I spent on something that the client doesn't want to pay for, the more time uh, I'm wasting their money because then the company had to pay me money for something that they only got a smile and a wink for. Uh, yeah. And then lastly, the projects, so I can see how much time I spend on those. And then down here, just some meta stuff. For instance, my invoice percentage, how much time could actually be invoiced from the time I did that day. And then I took this thing and then put it into this here. This here. That's my Excel sheet. Oh, sorry. That was my Excel sheet, and then I just made some dummy data for today. So let's say this is Jim from Zoltau, and he's a web designer, so it's uh, for 20 euros uh, an hour. Um, yeah. So what do you have here? <laughs> let's just start. The yellow column, that was the one time you spend at work that you don't get paid for. Hobby projects, breaks, uh, interest meeting, or interest time, something that drains my time without, yeah, just so I'm aware of how much time I invest there without me getting paid for it. The red columns, they're the ones that we can invoice. So if I put all my time in red columns, then that means that the money should come elsewhere, like uh, uh, paid monthly support for the company or some, something like that. Um, because if there was no support agreement with the customer and I put all my time there, then the company would probably close if everyone did that. But the green columns, they're the work that I put in that we could invoice. And then some of you may think, but was it actually invoiced? That's not John, uh, Jim, John, Tom's, I don't know. That's not his problem. His problem is to do the work and think, could this be invoiced? And then it's the invoices, the salespeople, it's their uh, responsibility to send it away. And this was my own judgment, or oh, this is Tom's own judgment, uh, if that could be invoiced. Right. Yeah, and then you sum up all of that time uh, out here in the one that says total, uh, W-O, unpaid. So that's all the time that Tom gets paid for work. And that gets summed up. Uh, I can just highlight it here. Hang on, I'm almost there. Here. That's summed up here. So that's how, much, how many hours that Jim gets paid for that week. And then you subtract, uh, sorry, no, then you add together all the hours that can be invoiced here, which means this number divided by that number becomes the invoice percentage for, the, for that week. So Tom can see, yeah, how, how many hours he did that could be invoiced. That's a good number to have. And employers usually do something a lot from these numbers and they rarely share them for some reason. But it's, uh, it's really us useful to know how much could actually be invoiced. Uh, and then you take that number, I just say that Tom, Tom gets paid 20 euro per hour and the, the bureau um, invoiced it out for 100 euros an hour. Which means that Tom did work for that, so that number, multiple, oh, sorry, that number multiplied by that number 
uh, there, oh yeah, you know, becomes that number. So the company could invoice 3,450 euro, uh, 3, euro that, uh, that week, while he cost 20 times that, about 1,000 euro, which means that Tom uh, brought together 2,481 euros that, that week. So if you do the time recording, export it, put it into your Excel sheet, then you can see week by week how much you actually make the company. And you can see when you actually demand that raise, is it realistic? Or, and you can show them the numbers or whatever. It just gives you an extra tool when you can think about it because you're going to spend about a fourth, a quarter of your life or a quarter of your adult life on work. So you might as well either make it fun for yourself or yeah, put yourself in a better position and do something about it. Uh, yeah, there's also other numbers, but I'll just skip those. Uh, I'll just go back here. Yeah, so just to sum up this whole work part, um, yeah, the whole thing where you're confronted with what am I actually doing before you do it, I think that's a really healthy question. Even if you go from here and say, I'm not going to time record anything in my life, then think about, should you, whenever you sit down at work, say, we all know that thing will be bounced from an email to just say something to a colleague, go in for coffee, and then boom, it's lunch. Where you sit down and say, what am I actually doing now? I think that's a really healthy question to ask ourselves. Yeah, clear feedback loop where we can see our numbers. We're confronted with them all the time. I think that's really healthy. It adds structure because no employer can look at that Excel sheet and say, oh, you're not structured. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> maybe that you're messy. That's another thing, but structured, <laughs> structured mess. Um, and yeah, and then you have raw data on what you're worth. You can then add up what you're worth week by week and say, I made the company this much. Maybe you should pay me a little, a little bit more or a little bit less if you're slacking off. Yeah, so the final clever things. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago because it's always fun to have the data, but it's never fun to make the data. So the next best time is now. So I would say if you really want it, try it out for a week or a month or whatever, and then see what it gives you or costs you in time. And the first month is fairly brutal. I had this app that auto opens the app whenever I unlocked it, so I didn't forget it. So just saying, the first month is hard, but once once you get into the rhythm, it's really not. It's really not that much of a time con uh, time consumer. Another quote: uh, "The cost of anything is the amount of time that we spend on it." So, whenever we buy juice for two euros, wherever, we always think, "Oh, that's just two euros." But think about think about how much time I actually spent making those two euros, because it's not just that effective time at work. It's also the transport there and laundering the shirt that you got to wear. There's many things involved. So, yeah, just saying, I think it's food for thought. Yeah, and that was the first part. I'm just going to do this and do this. Just stop the time. Stop the screen recording thing. Just start over. I messed it up. All right. Yeah, there was some recommended literature there. Did people want to have an explanation on that? Or all right, I'll open them. Whatever. Uh, hang on. Ah, here we go. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So uh, podcasts. Uh, CDP Gray, the guy, he also does it. But I've met no one else who records their entire life as myself. Um, but he's in the. Number two and number three, Cortex and Hello Internet. I think he's really inspiring, but he has a very uh, yeah, square way of looking at the world. So he's not for everyone, but I think he's really cool. And then, ah, oh wait, but why? That's a blog. Wow, that's in the wrong position. Yeah, and then Free Agents, that's um, two guys who talks about uh, going on your own with, uh, um, what do you call it, starting your own, starting as a freelancer, what to think about, how to control your time and getting an office space and is, th is it really worth it? Uh, they're really fun to look at. Uh, they're really interesting to listen to. And then back to work, that's that guy, Merlin Mann, with a guy called Dan Benjamin. And they talk about how to stop yourself from procrastination, but they keep doing it themselves a lot. 
So it's really interesting, that whole thing. Um, yeah, and books, I just picked the ones that just stood out the most for me, uh, to me. So I didn't put a long list or whatever. But uh, Barking Up the Wrong Tree, that's both really good and really frustrating for me. I really agreed with some things, but I really disagreed with, with some others. But I thought it had some nice, cool, extreme points. Uh, Deep Work by Kella Newport. Oh yeah, I didn't put the authors or reference because I thought it would make this whole thing look way more messy. Uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. I think that's my favorite book of all books. It's not linked to time recording as such, but it's, it has some really, really interesting insights. And I think that whole framework of thinking is really cool. Yeah, so that one I can really recommend. And the last one is So Good They Can't Ignore You. Um, and yeah, that's just a solid book. Yeah. Oui. All right. Uh, should we see if someone added questions to slide two? Sometimes it works and people ask questions. Sometimes they don't. Uh. Tabs. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> first one, do you feel rushed asking yourself every day if you lift how you expected to live? That's a good question. Um, and at some point, I like this whole structure thing. And what I did was that I tried to say every morning, I want to go through all the open tasks I have just to be aware of it. But I found that that was draining so much energy. Imagine just looking at all your life problems at first uh, and then going to what's actually important. And you have all these other things in the back of your mind. So that's one thing that I did that was really, really not a good way to do it. So what I decided to do because of this, then I say, this is the thing that I want to focus on today. Everything else is not important. Uh, invoices can forgot to be paid and all of these things, which means that the question to myself is only on a weekly, maybe monthly basis. The rest of the time, I just, I just clock it. So I don't ask myself that question every day, but I have it in the back of my mind that, that I try to act upon it. So what I want to get good at, that's that. And then I just go for it. And I say to myself, all the small little things, paying invoices, I can only do those things on Thursdays. I can't do it Mondays. That's just a rule for myself. So that's one way where you can Try to move the things around, these questions, or these things that disturb you from the things that ac that's actually important. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your kids, your wife, husband, whatever. Figure out what's important and give her the entire attention, I would say. Because, yeah, that, that's my advice on that. But, uh, but it, is a, it is a big question. And I would say sometimes it, it strikes one and you get soft knees whenever you think about it. Other times, when you had the data to to think to to see if you're actually doing it, then yeah, then it's different. So yeah, yeah. I hope that answered the question. The other one: um, Have you changed after looking at your own time tracking results? Oh yeah, have you changed after looking at your own time tracking results? And yes, most definitely. I think I've never changed as much as I did then. And not at first, it wasn't like boom, boom. But with time, you learn to use the data better and better. Uh, so most definitely. For instance, transport. Transport was, was and still is a very big chunk of my time. At one point, it was 15 to 18%. And that was because I, I trained some kids in volleyball, and that was twice a week I had to bike for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, that's a long way, two times a week. So even though I loved those kids with all of my heart, they were the coolest small things in the world, but were they worth me spending 18 of my life biking back and forth to them? No, no. They, and I can still think they're cool and talk about them here, and my memory of them is still with me, but they're not worth me biking there. So that's why everything I do, I try to do with it within arm's reach. So that's one thing, finding an office space close to yourself, find a job close to yourself, because it's easier to get a job that you may not like as much close to you than to uh, all of a sudden just waste 25% of your time 
uh, going in the car to some place that I really like. Then uh, that's just my opinion. Some people may disagree, but I think it's uh, yeah. So that's that's one thing. Yeah. 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 It's it's a, a good question, and um, I made it very binary. Is these kids worth this time? Because there's more colors to the rainbow than just that. But I looked at the cocktail, and even though it wasn't like clear, like no, it's not. It's like, not worth that time. But I looked at the whole thing, and I say, when I'm when I'm 80 and l lying in my bed with, uh, with my bed and with cancer and thinking back, back upon my, my life, I wouldn't think, oh wow, those 20 percent of my life sitting on my bike, that was cool. Um, even though it gives me that other thing, but then I would much rather try to find something in my local area that the time spent transporting is really dead time to me. But it can be different, and yeah, there's a physical aspect of biking back and forth and Maybe it's worth the investment, um, and if it is, great, great. Uh, but but I think it's a good question to say. We are all busy people, saying, "Oh, I don't have time to this in my life." But thinking about w what n what are the numbers? It's not a gut feeling because one one week I, I was thinking, "Wow, these kids! I could never leave them alone. I'd much rather do this than do my job." But other weeks I would say, oh, "Wow, that's a lot of time." Like wow, twelve hours doing a tournament, yelling at kids to stop throwing the ball around. Like, uh, <laughs> um, so it's give and take, and there's no easy way to answer it. But because of the numbers, due to the question, that changed that, um, and also it changed a lot. I saw that changing activity a lot costs way more resources than I had imagined. So oh yeah, I'll just read for twenty minutes and then do this and then just talk to this guy for fifteen minutes. So I tried to just remove all of the small things. So I had this massive chunk of time, boom, where I did what I love. That that changed a lot. The small things, just checking Facebook, checking the news, talking to this guy. Then it's way better to be vacant, to just do nothing and prepare yourself for the next next activity that means something. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get that question a lot. If it just feels monotone and the same to do the same thing, uh, because there's so big chunks of time, and uh, you know that you have to do this for 12 hours a day or eight hours a day. Wow, that's a lot. Um, and just and in that case, then if I were you, I would track the non-regular things and see those days. Am I having enough of those? Because uh, the question makes me think that you're afraid of having the same rhythm over and over for the rest of your life. <laughs> nah, obviously, or the beard tells me differently. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, yeah. In that case, I would structure my my time recording differently uh, according to you. But uh, I would still say that don't live for the weekends. I like. I I tried. Not just having Monday to Friday to be the same thing, but having Monday to Sunday, so you're still going to work on Saturday. So it's just a, so you don't have that, like, oh, now I can sleep in, now I can do this. But you have that rhythm, and maybe you, then you can go two hours before on a Saturday. But that that you still have that rhythm, and that really that that changed a lot. That was awesome, because then you can, then one day say, you know what, screw it on a Saturday, and then you don't have to call in sick and evoke this whole thing, but you have just so much more. And if you love what you do, which I do, then then it's not that hard. Then it's because you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Does it, did it answer the question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair yeah, <laughs> yeah.
That's a very good question. Uh, because no, I'm not in a relationship, and I haven't been for the duration that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I should try something else. <laughs> uh, because I thought about that a lot myself. Uh, what happens whenever I do get in a relationship? How am I gonna do that? And also, does this keep me from uh, what you, engaging with a relationship? I, I, I don't know. Maybe. So if you want a girlfriend, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I had a one point. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, um, but I, I don't have an answer to that question. But I, I do know that I hope I get kids one day, as you saw my little niece. Uh, I hope I get them, and I'm very sure that when I do, I will track the time spent with them to ensure that I spend enough time with them. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll schedule them. <laughs> uh, no. Um, I like the saying that goes, uh, "No hurry, no pause." Um, where some days you don't feel like him, and that's why, like a Sunday, where you just you just don't feel like him. And if you try to work. Or work seven hour, uh, seven days a week. We try to have that rhythm, because going to work on a Saturday that could also be going to work on your hobby project that you really enjoy. That you just go in and spend seven hours on work mental client where you try to think about something and solve it. It doesn't actually need to be work, but if you do that, then it frees up the resources to the, those days. I had one of those days where I just didn't feel like it, and then I just said, "Fuck it." And then I'll track the time differently. So it's uh, so so yeah. I think everyone has them, but I think the ratio that I'm getting them are, are, are descending. Where at first there was a lot, but I think we're used to this whole thing where it's now it's everyday Monday Friday. Really work, 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 work. Weekend, boom, and then work, 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 work. I think that balance somehow is I don't know. For me, so that did something. So I have those two, and also when I try to work, I just try to work. It doesn't mean that it's always really structured and really efficient, but I always try to work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Any others? Sh are we on time? Was it? Yeah. It's four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's two more. Qu should should we or should we? Yeah, the salsa lesson. Yeah, we we'll do that. Meanwhile, I'll put on some music. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, uh, over here. Mm -hmm. So outside of four hours, yeah. I can spend more time in front of computer, yeah. but that's no longer productive for me. Yeah. But the kind of social expectation is eight hours a day. Yeah. And when you start tracking it and uh, you know what's good for you, yeah. but kind of you at the same time feel, oh, I'm coming up short because it's not quite as good. Yeah. yeah. So how do you catch such uh, questions? And yeah. I was in. I was in. Uh, I'll give you the ball down version. Version. The, the longer version is a bit longer, but the ball down version was. I try to be fair. So whenever I was employed and I had to work, if I went to the bathroom, I clocked out and then clocked in when I came back. Same thing when I went for a breath of air. I thought, will someone actually pay me for breathing air uh, or not doing anything else? And then the answer is no. So I try to be fair, but then I just screw myself over because when I then put in my time in the time registering, then it was really difficult because everyone else just clocked if they were geographically at work. So what I decided was I had my own equation and then I, I made like a rough up thing for, because if they don't treat it realistically, then I won't either. Uh, so I, I just decided to keep it apart and then make a summary. Yes, I should have said that. That would be way shorter. <laughs> separate, yeah, just separate it. Because the world, the world is not structured for people who can work four hours a day, and people think they can work th 37, but they probably can't. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great. You are. We all are. We all are. Yeah. <laughs> Tattooed somewhere on you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 
when you see it in the museum, if you see all the uh, couple and all the uh, kind of together and all the nice display and then I would say um, downstairs you see, oh I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't uh, watch TV uh, one, one hour a day and uh, it's very pretty or uh, something else. Yeah. <laughs> makes me all warm and fussy. <laughs> it makes me all warm and fussy inside when you say it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then you should just you should don't sync them then you can have them two different uh yeah yeah <laughs> nice Sweet, yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. Send me an email with if your system varies from mine. I'm interested. <laughs> I've met it, no one else. So. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well played. Well played. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you.